Welcome back to the greenhouse, everybody. And if you're new here, welcome. I really want to just stop, take a minute, and say thank you to you guys. You guys make this possible. We started this YouTube channel just kind of sharing. We didn't know what to expect. So we've got a lot of people on board now since the start of this channel here. So it's very cool to see you guys liking our content, just going back and forth on ideas. I've learned a lot from you guys out there. So this is a very cool platform to be able to share and to be able to gain knowledge as well as exchange knowledge. So with all of you guys on board today, I just want to break down the water lines for our compost heating system, our John Payne compost heating system. Now, if that sounds interesting and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get on with this video. So today marks the start of our Jean Payne compost heater because we are starting to put all of the systems together. It was just a bunch of pieces with the dismantling of last winter's compost heater finally complete. We dispersed everything from it, which was 10 tons. The breakdown was about one to two tons. So we probably ended up with a little over eight tons of broken down material and wood chips that we were able to repurpose for a lot of different things. So now that it's dismantled, all of those pieces are reusable. So we can recycle, reuse for many years over. And that's the best part about it. It's a zero waste heater and once you invest, it's a zero cost heater also. Now this season I spent maybe 50 to $60 on discount items and a few fittings and stuff like that. Some shark bite PEX fittings to get the PEX to go together. So I want to share all of that and just give that financial bit there, 50 to $60 to operate this heater. And I didn't even need to do that. I'm just trying to build upon the systems I have and be able to harvest more heat more efficient. So before I head outside, the things I did purchase was this PEX fitting and some of this aluminum ducting. I paid like four and a half dollars a piece for these and they stretch out and it's rigid or semi-rigid. So it's not going to crush nearly like a regular dryer ducting vent would. Now this is also purely experimental. A lot of the things we've done have been purely experimental and with a bit of research and a strong back, I've been able to achieve a lot of stuff on my own here and share it with all of you guys. So another thing I did purchase was connectors. So I could butt connect all of these together and be able to connect them to our four inch drain tile. We're gonna use our drain tile as the long transfer medium which we're going to wrap in insulation that is for a later video but the metal pieces are what is going to be for transferring heat really think that the metal ducting inside will pick up more heat and transfer it a little bit better than all of our drain tiles so the last thing that we actually got was a 55 gallon drum and that was absolutely free I'm trying to get the camera to focus here so we picked up this drum we paid ten dollars for that one and there was another one that had like a scratch or a dent on it and i got it for free and we've got this one that is completely going to be engulfed in compost so there's no need it is super windy there's no need for painting this or doing anything else with this we simply came by and we filled it up with water here and we got rain a heavy rain we got a little bit of soy oil, but this is just soybean oil. And this drum is physically warm, actually, just from sitting in the sun. There goes that good old thermal mass. So now that we've got our barrel set up full of water and a little bit of residual soybean oil, which isn't going to hurt anything next year when we clean it out again. So we're going to jump right into wrapping the pecs around this and running our lines inside. I put it on boards. I got it up about an inch and a half off the ground and there's air underneath and that is going to provide better insulation than being on the flat hard mud. Even with a huge pile I still don't want to lose that geothermal heat. I want a nice blanket of all of these wood chips to be underneath the pile of compost. So we've just got our drum going in, we've got those aluminum pipes and we've got this pex tubing. That is it. It's just going to be encased in compost. So 
So as you can see, that was not real easy. Our PEX was kind of cold and it's old too. It's not brand new PEX that I just bought or anything. This is like three years old, four years old or something. So we've got this PEX. I should have put it in the greenhouse to warm it up and make it a little more pliable. But I did get that wrapped around and I can tighten it up a little bit. It's pretty tight on there. It's not falling off or too loose or anything. I may take some wire and wrap it over the top and just kind of put pieces in between each segment and wrap the wire up. And doing this one person, I had to take the PEX ends over there and just basically stick them under a brick to be able to keep it nice and level so I could get a good grip on it and pull it tight and then put the brick on so they didn't come down and it didn't loosen up on itself. Once it sits in this position long enough, it will want to retain that position. It'll just have like a memory of it. So we don't have to worry about this popping off or anything like that. I may pound the stakes back in because I couldn't work with the stakes. I just couldn't get it in there. If I had a nice pliable, softer rubber hose or something, it would be a lot easier with a material like that. But this PEX is super durable and I like using it because it's able to be recycled over and over. It's for potable water. I got the ends of the PEX taped off to protect them so they didn't get dirty or get anything inside. I do have to clean the gunk off the ends before I attach them together and I will show that process but first I've got to dig out where our lines transferred through. I buried it in to keep rodents, raccoons, possums from just going right in. It's like a little doggy door where I had dug out so let's get into that and then we'll run our lines inside. So now that we're working with our two PEX lines run inside the greenhouse, we've determined this will be our feed into the greenhouse and this will be for attaching to a pump. So now we've got to attach this piece of PEX to that piece of PEX and that's where all these pieces come in. We've got this PEX, two PEX, shark bite. Now this is like $25, you might be able to find it a little cheaper online this thing will get us where we need to be so it also comes with this fitting here a little bit of algae in the line so we're going to take this and stick it right in this pex here pop that in pop the quick fitting right on you can rotate it and it doesn't come off so it gets a good bite on the pex we're going to take our other one So now that we've got our two PEX lines attached, this is going to flow from the compost here right through all the way in. And it will go down the entirety of the greenhouse. You can see it. You can see it back here all the way through, all the way back up. And then this is where it dumps back into our overflow. I mean, we've got our overflow. We're just trying to keep it covered so we don't get a whole bunch of algae growth while the sun was still strong here. So I created myself this piece here. Now this end is kind of flared because we had this attached to a pump and it had a ridged nipple on the end or a ridged barb so it was going to fit and hold and grab right on. Now this is how we were achieving a downsized flow. Show this here. So this was a shark bite fitting downsized to uh, maybe one quarter inch copper with a compression fitting on the end of there. So this was a homemade piece where I just had another compression fitting to get to the copper. This compression fitting was to get to the copper that was in our pile. So that's how we attached our copper to itself. So now all I have to do is attach my pump. My water pump ran off solar power right out to the compost pile through that PEX. So there's one more connection to make. We're not going to set up or run the water yet. I've got a couple pumps I wanna try out and I wanna see flow rates and stuff like that. Our goal is to achieve about four liters per minute or about one gallon per minute. So before I relate this information to heating water and heating air and just make it relative to the conversation here, prep work is everything. And getting those water lines wrapped around there, I'm going to do a little more work with that, but that's the basic gist 
of it. I have a big spool of wire here. Now I can take this real thick gauge wire and I can just wrap each piece together and then segment them one, two inches apart and stagger them down and just kind of weave it together. Or I can just wrap it up, pound posts around it, keep it tight. Or I can take some metal cage or metal wire and wrap it around it all. So there's a bunch of solutions that I have on hand. So as I was saying, our goal is one gallon a minute or about four liters per minute is what Jean Payne documented the heating of water from groundwater all the way up to 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. A quick energy use perspective on this. Now, to heat one pound of air, one pound is about 13 cubic feet. It takes 13 cubic feet, 13.333 repeating, to equal one pound. So it takes a lot of air to make one pound. And just to heat that one pound, it only takes 0.24 BTUs to heat that one pound of air by one degree Fahrenheit. Now let's relate that to water. Now to heat one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit, it takes one BTU. That's what the British Thermal Unit or BTU is based off of. So that is a very minimal amount of water. So let's quickly relate that to a gallon of water. One gallon weighs 8.33 pounds. So 8.33 BTUs is what it's gonna require to heat that gallon of water just by one degree Fahrenheit. So that is why I am experimenting with the air systems. That is why I draw air and water and I kind of interchange them. I operate them together if I have a large enough pile and I have my BTUs figured out so I'm not overdrawing and deactivating the pile when it's really cold outside. There's a whole lot that goes into this. So stay tuned for all of the updates on this. I kind of want to break it down piece by piece by piece. So we got our water lines ran around our thermal mass barrel for the center of the compost pile and we ran our lines in. We quick connected the PEX to PEX and now everything is ran. All we've got left to do is hook up our pump and then we will be able to push water out of this exit line into our overflow tank here. So we're gonna run our air line separately. I can hear a tractor out there spreading stuff. So we're gonna run our air line separately in a separate video. We're going to insulate all of our transfer lines. We're going to build our pile after we get everything set up outside. We can really get to starting all of these heat transfer systems I'm talking about. So before this video gets too long, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Any questions, reach out. Thank you to all the thousands of subscribers. But I'd like to thank you guys again and I will see you in the next video.